Welcome back. The Pope's visit is now eight days away, and residents of El Paso and Juarez are finalizing those plans for the big visit. But what happens if the Sun City isn't quite so, <laughs> yeah. shall we say, sunny? ABC 7 Storm Track meteorologist Crystal Clay is here to explain who is in charge of the official papal forecast. So there is someone actually in charge of this. Yeah, that's right, Hillary. And you know what? We are looking at computer models right now suggesting that we could see some nice and maybe even warm weather for that visit on the 17th. But we know that early models can sometimes miss the mark right. when you're that far out for. Forecasting, and we also know the borderland is not exactly foreign to some wacky weather. From thunderstorms to dust storms to freezing temperatures and snow, the borderland sees it all, even in February. We've been through hundreds of meetings and spent thousands of hours planning for this for this event. El Paso Emergency Management Coordinator Chief Altaravera says they've partnered with agencies across the state of Texas to prepare for the Pope's visit. The National Weather Service is going to be providing what we call decision support services. Warning coordination meteorologist John Fawcett says they'll track the weather the week of and day of the Pope's visit, rain or shine. We have uh, uh, various types of applications we can use for radar, for uh, computer model forecasting, for uh, data collection. The National Weather Service will have laptops like this one all over the borderland loaded with those applications because while the Pope may be on that side of the border, they'll be hard at work on this side forecasting. They'll station in Far East El Paso, downtown, at their office in Santa Teresa, and even at the Sun Bowl, where tens of thousands are expected. Even if the weather is nice, there's always the potential of some kind of uh, ha hazardous material uh, incident, and you need weather information for that type of thing. Both Fawcett and Taravera agree everyone's goal is the same. We're working here in El Paso to make sure that the citizens of, of this area of El Paso are safe. And John Foster is actually joining us in the studio this morning. It's our monthly visit, but this kind of works really well timing wise because we're almost a week out on that visit. Yeah. And, John, I want to start with a question that I think a lot of people in our newsroom had, which is that question of, you know, we're on this side of the border. We have a lot of folks that are going to be going right. over the border into Juarez to see this, the That's Pope's right. visit next week. Can you tell us a little bit about is there any working over the border? How is that going to work with the Weather Service over there? Well, the, the, the uh, National Weather Service of Mexico most likely most likely will be involved. We will we are investigating having some type of a communication with civil defense over there. We're available if they need it. That's uh, our primary uh, emphasis, of course, is on this side of the border. But since we're having so many citizens over there, and we have thousands that work over there anyway. Uh -huh. We do try to have some kind of a, a relationship over there, but uh, this is, I don't know if we've ever had anything like this. And, and let's get to the big question, which is how is the forecast looking? So let's pop back up that graphic and talk a bit about it. Now models often change. We always warn this when we're giving you forecasts early out. It's hard to do so more than 10 days out, John. Now one model was suggesting dry, sunny weather. Earlier we had another model that was suggesting maybe rainy and cloudy conditions, which is why we weren't giving that definitive answer out there. That model's now shifting towards kind of nicer conditions. That's right. Uh, it, it was a little nerve wracking. Uh, a day or so ago yeah. when we were seeing this upper low bringing rain to the entire area. Now that upper low is still in the dry solution just much further away and much further to the south. So in the back of my mind I'm thinking well uh, the salute what if it we've seen this before it starts handling that upper low in the wet manner again. So I'm a little more confident in a, a dry scenario with a ridge overhead, but you never say never in weather. Exactly. That's something we'll be watching up until the day of, and then you guys, the day of, of course, will be all over the borderland watching that forecast. Did want to explain to viewers uh, what is a computer model? Now, I've got a little explain that we just saw on the screen there. The computer models, the reason they can't be a guarantee is because weather is always changing, and models are just the falling of an equation using current data. So this is something that is always changing for you guys as well. That's right. You know, they're, they're taking the data, and with that data, they're modeling the atmosphere and then projecting that model out into the future using incredibly uh, complicated uh, mathematical equations, which, of course, we had to go through in our education through yeah. school to get our degree. So uh, the models aren't perfect, though, and they vary from each other. Some have strengths uh, and uh, where others have weaknesses and vice versa. And so we have to look at the different model runs. Uh, 
look at the ones that usually perform better in certain patterns and also use our background, our training to look at the patterns ourselves. And of course, we're looking very hard with this papal visit. Yes, well, John, I wish you and the rest of the National Weather Service very good luck as you head out to the borderland the day of the visit. We'll be right Thank back. You.